Good morning, folks. And here's a wonderful post by IGN who interviewed actor Tadanobu Asano, who plays Hogan in the Thor movies at the Fuji Rock Festival in Japan this year. And he has to talk about Thor Love and Thunder, because that's the big cool thing nowadays to talk about, I guess. And he has to say, it's fantastic. I love Marvel, and I'd love to see this movie. It's a great thing for female fans. Awesome, see? He's not uh, attacking the hand that feeds. Good man. So, it's a great thing for female fans. All right, that's fine. There are limitations to what men can do. Uh, this is a true statement. There are limitations to what anything can do. Like uh, a chair is not a car, but okay. For example, watching Captain Marvel, I felt it would not be the same movie if she had been a man. You know what, Mr. Asano, you're true. That That's a true statement. You're right. Um, if it was a man, it would have felt like a different movie. I think if it was a different actress, it would have felt like a different movie entirely. But yeah, Captain Marvel being a guy... Very different movie. That's true. When the female characters go into battle, they inspire bravery in their male comrades. Again, another true statement. None of this is wrong. This is all good. Just, uh, you know, when anyone goes into battle and they're like cool and strong and a leader, they inspire bravery in their comrades, male or otherwise. So just that happens to be most battles involve men historically and even in comics. But... No, not not downplaying the female comrades there or the female characters. It's just uh, any any leader who people respect go into battle or lead the charge will definitely inspire bravery. So uh, maybe he's talking specifically about Norse female characters or Norse mythological characters like the Valkyrie. Um, I guess the Shield Maidens. I thought those, that might be a real thing. If I remember my Viking lore, but yeah, sure. Again, all true. Nothing wrong. Asano sees new possibilities for a female version of Thor. Yes, so do I. <laughs> very good possibilities and very bad possibilities. I'm only speculating, but a female Thor could give birth, right? Well, you're not speculating, sir. Females can give birth. You know, they, they gestate within their womb. And voila, a baby is produced. This is true. So, sir, you're, you don't have to speculate there. We have historical evidence. These things can happen. Chris Hemsworth can't do that. This is, again, these are all true statements. Chris Hemsworth cannot give birth, God or otherwise. He is a limited male. It is true. But Natalie Portman could. Hmm. This is true. Which opens up new possibilities. Thor could actually have a child. Oh, my goodness. You could have three godsons and a... And the goddess. There's three, 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 was that movie, Three Men and a Baby? <laughs> three Valkyries and a goddess? I don't know. <laughs> I think Natalie Portman and Thor will be a positive thing, not only for Marvel fans, but for all of us? Really? Okay, so even if you're not a fan of Marvel or don't know a darn thing about Thor or care to even see a movie with, with women and men trying to kill each other, as, as a whole, humanity is going to be great. It's going to be better off because this lady is going to pick up a hammer and summon lightning. It's like, woo, thank you. Thank you, humanity. Thank you, Hollywood. You've just done the rest of the world, well, the first world, a great service for choosing a supporting character and bringing her into the limelight as a main, a main protagonist. Where uh, you're, the queen of said potential kingdom is is calling herself a king, or whatever Thor did at Endgame, telling Valkyrie to become a king or queen or whatever. I don't know. I didn't watch it yet. <laughs> oh boy! You know, I, I I'm wondering what Marvel was doing choosing this sort of storyline, and I get why they're going with this route of saying, "Hey." Women are strong and all this other junk. It's fine. It's great. I mean, that's that's fine. I don't think Waititi is going to run with that, maybe as a joke, but not as a, as a major theme. Whether the Valkyrie character is, is, is bisexual or lesbian or whatever, I don't think it's going to have any real value. It's just a talking point. It's just a thing to scream about. And if that gets eyeballs on articles like this, then great. 
Like it's good for the movie. It, it, but I really don't think the movie's gonna gonna be as ridiculous as they're making it out to be, or as other people online are talking. Oh, it's just gonna be a bunch of women talking about other women and how men are bad. I don't think so. And the reason why I argue that is I look at the sales for 2014, and 2014 was the the uh, was it the Jason Aaron comic, I believe. Um, and if we look at Thor 1, this is the her individual comic. For, so, so Jane Foster becomes Thor. Number 2, number 3. Thor, God of Thunder, 25. And this is where Jane Foster is makes her cameo. So this is obviously male Thor. So that's, that's how you do it in comics. You introduce a character through a main popular comic, and then people see that character go, oh, I know that character, or I'm interested in that character, I want to see more. But why would they want to see more? They can't just buy issue one, two, and three and keep going. And by the way, these, these sales are not very good. But, you know, to get in the top 10 is pretty decent for issue one in 2014. But why, why did they sell? What made these things work? Well, the art work has to be good. But most importantly, the writing has to be good. And here is the trade paperback for Thor God of Thunder. Volume 1, and 20 bucks. Marvel didn't sell very well. We're talking about trade paperbacks, so it's not a big deal. But the reason why I bring this up is J. Michael Straczynski, or JMS, is a good writer. So he took Thor and he created the, the God Butcher story where Thor is no longer worthy. That's why we have Jane Foster now in 2014. All because of JMS writing Thor from 2007 to 2011. That's why. And then Jason Aaron, also a good writer, ran with that. So he took a good story and expanded on it. Why was Thor unworthy? Who is the God Butcher? What's going on? Why are, are gods dying, etc.? So I really don't think if Waititi, no, if Waititi follows these stories, and all he has to do is read the comics... And if he gets inspired by that, he'll have a great script. He'll direct a great movie. Not because women are strong and it inspires men and da 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 None of that crap. It's because the writing is good. And that's what I think is going to work out in this movie. I could be wrong, of course. I could be totally wrong. Waititi could go crazy stuff. The producers could go nuts with the whole bisexual, lesbian angle. But hopefully not. And I'm just uh, spitballing, and this is all just one big silly hype machine, as I'm sure all articles like this throughout the year will be, oh, women are strong. Here's a great new photo of, of Natalie Portman, and she's got the mask on, she's got the helmet on. Oh, she's great. Who knows? Um, but hey, that's just my take on it. Thanks for listening, guys. Have yourself a great morning.